while there are a lot of benefits with respect to using different microservices framework and architecture patterns in developing these microservices things get messier when there are failures especially when you're using saga kind of a pattern you will have to have a way to handle failures in the form of compensating transactions in this video we are going to see how we are going to use transactionality in distributed microservices we are going to take an example of zomato and we will look at why we need a compensating transaction in an architecture which uses saga kind of an event driven pattern and finally we will look at how we can develop self compensating transactions within the same architecture let's get started press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss any update from tech primers initially i am going to lay out the small different components of the zomato system design if you are already familiar with the zomato kind of a system design then this could be familiar for you however i would want you to give a brief about the transactionality between these microservices so that i can explain you why do we need to compensate a transaction generally for a food delivery service the different restaurants register themselves with a central third party from the third party these food providers they get restaurant information and menu information from them here i am quoting a restaurant service which is getting information from the restaurant and menu third party provider there are different third party providers in india so similar way there are different providers in each country who is providing information about restaurants and their menus so the restaurant service is going to get all those information from the restaurant and the menu the user who is going to use the zomato mobile app he is going to select a restaurant from the mobile app and the selection is all made from the restaurant service because the restaurant service provides all the restaurants to the mobile app and once the restaurant is selected the user is going to select the list of items which he wants to add to a cart the moment he clicks on add to cart the cart information gets added into a ui which is shown like this here obviously in the back end this gets added to a cart service because every time you quit the app and when you log in again you can see the same cart available for you so that basically means there is a state which is maintained so cart service is going to have its own database and the cart information is stored in that database obviously i am not going to show you the database information in this architecture diagram but imagine every microservice has its own table in the back end once the items are added to the cart we are going to put all our promo codes and then finally we are going to add the order right so the moment you click on order you are going to order the items in addition to that you are going to pay for it so generally what happens is when the order information goes to the order service it's going to initiate a payment for you and here for example i have picked up a online payment example where the request goes from the order service to the payment service so you enter your credit card information or debit card or maybe upi or any wallet information so payment service knows what are the different offers what are the different payment integration services which are there in the back end so i am not showing that in depth here but payment service does some external connectivity and it finalizes the payment and completes and then sends the results back to the order service now once the payment service is completed that's when the order proceeds to the next step now here the order service acts like the central orchestrate because the order service is going to emit events and based on those events different microservices are going to behave differently now once the payment is completed we are going to call the restaurant order service so from the order service an order information is going to be sent to a different service called restaurant order service which is going to maintain all the interaction between the restaurant software and the internal order system right so once you send the order information to this particular service it pushes those orders into the restaurant software which is maintained by the whole third party system right so obviously there will be a ui for the restaurant person who is going to accept or reject the orders at the same time when the order is sent to the restaurant the information about the order is sent to the delivery executive service so this delivery exec service is going to assign a new delivery executive parallelly because you don't have to have a bottleneck for an order to be accepted from the software then you have to look at the delivery executive obviously when the order gets cancelled you can go and cancel it but here i'm just showing a happy path where the order is sent to the restaurant parallelly an executive has been assigned or has been instructed to be assigned once the order is actioned by the uh, personnel from the restaurant he is going to update saying i have accepted the order now the order is going to be prepared right now that information is sent back to the order service and parallelly the delivery exec service 
will find a new delivery executive who is placed nearby within that particular area based on the order details. That's why the order service acts as a central party so that it gives all the necessary information and delivery exec service goes back to the order service or maybe the address service or the user service to fetch this information and then tie them back. I'm not showing those here, but it could happen in the background. Now, once the delivery executive has been identified, he's assigned a new delivery order that goes on to his mobile app. Parallelly, what happens is as a user, we will be able to see who has been assigned and where is he currently, right? So we are going to have a new service called tracking service, which is going to track the delivery executive's location and send that back to the mobile app for us to view. We will be able to view if the delivery executive is present in the particular area or what is he doing, etc. Most of the time what we do, we just keep on looking at where is this guy present and things like that, right? So we can view that using the tracking service, which is integrated to the delivery executive and to the mobile app. Now, the next step is to have the order ready. So the restaurant personnel says that the order has been prepared. So the food is prepared now, the delivery executive needs to be present in the restaurant. Now, obviously he will go to the restaurant and then he will update the app saying he is in the restaurant. Most of the time this happens automatically when the location goes there and he will be taking up the order and then he, now he's going to change the status of the order from prepared to picked up. So if you see here, I have just sent a message to the delivery exec service. The delivery exec service takes care of updating it to the order service. Now order service knows that the order has been picked up. The user is notified from the mobile app. And finally, once the delivery executive delivers the order, we are going to update the order service saying that the order has been delivered. This is how a simple successful flow looks like. Now, the question is, why do we need a compensating transaction in this particular scenario? So this looks like a saga pattern because order service is going to orchestrate each and every movement of the transaction or the order throughout the life cycle of this particular order. So it interacts with so many different services and it acts like a central hub which distributes these transactions. Now what happens if something fails within this particular flow because there are too many things happening. Now how will the system behave in that particular case? That's when compensating transactions help us. Imagine the restaurant said that they ran out of some food and they are not able to deliver the food. Now the restaurant comes back and says we are going to reject the order because we don't have the food. So we will initiate a refund. Now what happens within the system is let's say I remove the uh, successful flows. Now instead of the order accepted now the user is going to receive an order rejected. So after the order got accepted suddenly the restaurant goes and rejects the order or cancels the order. In this case I just put order rejected. Now what happens what all things do you need to take care of within this whole complicated distributed transaction. Now all those needs to be taken care in an automated fashion, isn't it? When this particular event order rejected has been triggered by the restaurant software, now order service is going to go and do something different. So it's going to initiate one particular event called refund. So that initiate refund message is sent to the payment service because the order has been canceled. So the payment needs to be re refunded to the customer. So that will be one particular event. The other event would be if an executive has been already assigned, that needs to be cancelled. So it will send a cancel executive message to the delivery executive service. So that will go ahead and send information to the delivery executive saying that order has been cancelled. And obviously if the tracker was already present, it will also remove the tracker because user should not see the executive's place now because the order got cancelled. So that will be again happening. So this is what happens when we compensate a single transaction. Obviously there are a lot of different failure scenarios in this particular architecture. So let's look at some of them, right? So what are the other failures? Now, what happens if the whole order service goes down? You can argue that we have order service deployed in different regions, different availability zones, if you, they are in AWS and things like that. But what if the order service goes down completely in all the regions? So that could create a panic because the order will get stuck in one place or the other because the order is what orchestrates the whole workflow within the system. So what is the next failure? Now what happens if the restaurant or the delivery personnel doesn't respond or the order is stuck in the same state for long? That could be a possibility as well. Now how do we handle that failure? Isn't it? Now the third one is what happens if the payment refund also is not successful? Though we handled it in a successful way and then we automated refund of the payment, 
Now, what happens if the payment doesn't happen automatically? So how will the system behave in that case? And finally, what happens if the tracking service did not even remove the tracker so that the user is able to see where the delivery executive is present? So these are some of the failures which can be handled in a different fashion. So that is where self-compensating transactions come into picture. Now, if you look at the architecture here, I've just marked the order service as red because I presume that the order service went down here. So the other states are all the same. Now, what happens if the order service goes down? So we need to have a way to identify that the order service is down and we need to have some help in terms of maybe it could be an operation team which can go and fix it or it could be self-healing your application or maybe self-triggering an alternative or a DR strategy, etc. So in order to do that, we are going to introduce a new service called Status Checker which is going to check the order service state. Obviously, you might be asking the next question, what happens if the status checker goes down? Obviously, if status checker is also gone, then you are in trouble, right? So uh, let's assume that the status checker is going to go and check the order service. If the state of the order service is down, then status checker is going to send a message to an operations team. In addition to that, it'll go and try to self heal the order service. It can go and spin up a new order service in a new cluster or a new region, etc. right? It can do that and it can try healing the application. The other thing could be if the payment system did not re refund after a specific point in time or a specific amount in time, it can go and trigger the refund again, knowing that the earlier refund did not happen or did not trigger successfully. The same way, it can go and identify if the delivery executives are not assigned or assigned properly. So status checker can do all these kinds of different compensations which order service couldn't do and then status checker identifies that there is something wrong in the system and then it can go and fix it. Obviously there is going to be a timeout involved with respect to checking each and every aspect of an order. So status checker is going to be like an intelligent box which is going to understand how the systems are going to behave with respect to different events. Now finally there is going to be an operations team which is going to look at the status checker dashboard and react to these events. For example, what if the order got stuck for a long time with the restaurant? Now the operations team need to be notified that there is an order which is lying for a while and the user is not getting any update. So that's when the operation team jumps in, gives the call to the restaurant or gives the call to the del delivery executive if he is stuck somewhere, etc. Right? That's where you will have to have a combination of self-compensating transaction in terms of identifying anomalies in the system, notifying this operations team if some things couldn't be solved by the system itself. This is how you can handle failures in a Saga architecture pattern and these are called as compensating transactions. I hope you were able to understand how can we handle compensating transactions in an event-driven architecture like Saga's. Do let me know in the comment section if this was helpful. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.